Let's look at week 23 in the NBA, the second last week of the regular season. Michael Bolton, how excited are you? Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. Michael, just once. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Jocelyn and I will know that this podcast has become popular when someone split screens it on TikTok with another video of someone cutting up dough with a pair of kitchen scissors. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball. And on Instagram, at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. So hit the uh, thumb. Hit the subscribe. We're here. We're towards the finish line of the regular season. Show doesn't end. We keep going. But the regular season's ending. Um, so yeah, thumb it up, double bang, you know, how we roll week 23, the penultimate week. Good word, penultimate. We are rolling in and for a lot of you in Yahoo default leagues, which have a unbelievable amount of problems. Um, this is your finals week. So congratulations if you are making the finals of your Yahoo default league or the league where your commissioner was too lazy to change the defaults. And if you are one of those commissioners who is too lazy to change the defaults, don't be lazy. We're going to do a whole show on that in the off-season of the things you need to change. Yahoo would never listen to me in making their defaults better, but you can make it better by doing the right thing. Anyway, that's enough of that. I could talk about that for a long time, and I will, through May and June and July and all that, whenever, we do, whenever I decide to do that setting show. Week 23. Bit of a weird week. Not as bad as week 24, I'm telling you now. But the the week is not as perfect as some of the other the playoff weeks we've had. But this one is, it's interesting. We might as well just go through it. What's it actually look like in terms of the week? We've got six games on Monday, nine on Tuesday, nine on Wednesday, back-to-back Niners. Thursday, we've got five, and then it gets a little bit wonky. 12 on Friday, four on Saturday, 13 on Sunday. So it's really obvious to tell what we're trying to do here. It's going to be basically impossible to stream in on Sunday. It's going to be basically impossible to stream in on Friday, but you can do it the other five days. The other complicating factor with this week is there are going to be random blokes shut down for the season. Now, when you are two weeks to go in the year or 10 days or whatever days left, depending on what day, being out for the season's a one and a half week injury. It's not a big deal, but you're going to see those things start to go down. Like Tamani Kamara, for example, today announced out for the season with like a was a rib fracture, which is normally like a two, two and a half week injury, but that's all that's left in the year. So you're going to see blokes and you're going to see these guys with these debilitating hamstring problems like Jeremy Graham or, you know, unbelievably problematic quad contusions like Larry Market. And at some point we'll find out that they're not coming back because there's 10 days, well, 10 days, almost 10. There's 14 days left in the season, 12 game days left. Some of these teams have got seven games, some of them have got eight. There's not much going on. There's not much left. So we are going to see random stuff happen. So being nimble, it's a, it's a weird week. So we've got to, we want to try and preserve ads as much as we can towards the end of the week to take advantage of guys sitting and random opportunities opening up. But the end of the week is so heavily jam-packed with games that you're not going to have as many opportunities to stream. So the sweet spot's going to be the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday scenario versus trying to burn stuff that early on. And again, the back-to-backs all do play a part in this. It is a weird week. It is not an easy week, um, but it is a week that is absolutely chock-a-block, jam-packed, absolutely full with games because four the four game teams there's 26 of them everybody plays four games apart from Chicago Denver San Antonio and Utah everybody else plays four games so that's like it's obviously when you've got someone on one of those three four teams it's not great especially in a weekly format now in a daily changes format we can take advantage of that We are going to try and look at that. And also remember, every four-game week is not created equal. You will have plus two differences in quality games. You'll have the Hawks, where all four of their games are quality game days. And then you have half of those 26 teams, at least, where they only have two quality games because they play Friday and they play Sunday. There's going to be, obviously, there's a lot of teams. 
There's 26 teams playing Sunday. There's 24 teams playing Friday. So you're going to have those um, so those teams that the streaming value from all these four-game teams, a lot of it is occurring Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then obviously with just eight teams playing on Saturday. So it is, like I said, a little bit of a weirder schedule. Next week gets disgusting. We've got two zero-game days next week and two 15-game days. So that is four days where there is absolutely zero streaming happening. Although, to be fair, the final Sunday of the regular season, they will be streaming because half your blokes will be out and you'll be streaming in the man you've never heard of, old mate Malzinha Pereira, will be playing 40 minutes a night on that day. Maybe that becomes streamable. What a disaster of a day that's going to be. So what are we looking at in terms of the stream zone? You can target all days, really apart from Friday and Sunday. All right, We know that the, four, the five streaming days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Saturday. But how do we maximize our games played? Well, this is going to be really dependent on how your roster currently looks. What does your setup look like at the moment? How many ads do you have? That's always going to be um, a part of the discussion and the equation as to how we maximize. So if you are watching this on YouTube, you'll see the third line there that says, Drop Bulls Tuesday. And you go, what the hell does that mean? What does Drop Bulls Tuesday mean? Well, Chicago was one of the four teams that I mentioned that has only three games this week. One of their games is on Monday. The next two of their games are on 12-game Friday and 13-game Sunday. Now, someone like DeMar DeRozan, you probably don't drop, right? Someone like Nikola Vucevic, Kobe White, borderline, borderline. Ayodesumu, Alex Caruso. Now we're talking. Where do we go with this? And I'll tell you why we do this, because we'll get into that too, in, in, into a second. Just think, think that, right? Spurs and Jazz... If you drop those guys on Wednesday, because they play the first of their three games on Tuesday, and then they go Friday, Sunday. So we're always looking to plus one or plus two on stuff. Yes? That's our been our playoff games played mantra. Get a plus two. So if we're talking about the Bulls after Monday, they have zero quality games. If you're talking about the Spurs and the Jazz, after Tuesday, they have zero quality games. So you're then going to be searching out teams that have two quality games that you can transition those players into. And I went a little bit ahead of myself talking about Vooch and DeRozan and that sort of stuff, but we'll talk about them and how we we plan out this, uh, this idea. We'll get to that in just a second. Because today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers get... $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. So bet on all of your favorite NBA teams, your favorite NBA players, or honestly, the ones you think are going to win. Look at the money lines, look at spreads, look at exclusive player props, live same game parlays, quick bets, futures, NBA champs, MVPs, all of that stuff is available over on FanDuel. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NBA And don't forget to gamble responsibly. All right, so that's where we're at. We're talking about the Bulls, drop them on Tuesday. Spurs and Jazz, drop them on Wednesday. What do I exactly mean by that? Well, that would have been good for me to tell you because I'm going to tell you about it now. So when we're talking about the Bulls, if you transition a Chicago player into a Cavs player or a Lakers player, you turn a week that if you held on to, let's say, let's use Ayo Desumu, Alex Caruso as your example, right? If you have those guys on your roster, you've got three games total for the week. They play one quality game on Monday. Would you start Alex Caruso on a 12-game Friday, a 13-game Saturday, a Sunday? Would you start Ayodesumu on those days? Would you? I don't know. When we get to a guy like Kobe White, who's really struggling, when we get to a guy like Nikola Vucevic, think about this way. Would you start them on Friday and Sunday? Basically, almost definitely yes. Right, I, I think you would look at your roster on Friday and say, yes, I will we'll use Vooch here. I will start Vooch on Friday. Yes? But let me ask you this question. The guy that you're sitting on Friday, your 11th best player, you've got a full roster. There's 12 games on. You've got a full roster. Your 11th best player who won't be active. Is the difference between Vooch on Friday and that 11th best player, the difference between their projected stats 
is that difference between those two things greater than getting a whole ass extra player on a different day? I don't know who's going to be available in your league, but like I said here, if you drop a Bulls player after Monday, this is a controversial thing. Like you, this might not be for you, and you might not want to do it, and it might not work. If you drop the Chicago guy after Monday's game, so I say drop them Tuesday, if you drop them after Monday's game and turn it into a Cavs player or a Lakers player, that might be the Winter Soldier, Max Struess. It might be Georgie Yang. It might be Jokara Slavert. It might be Rui Hachimura, Torian Prince. Maybe it's Spencer Dinwiddie. Right, you can turn that one quality game from the Bulls into four total quality games. And the reason that is the case is because the Cavs play Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. The Lakers play Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. So the difference on Friday and on Sunday, right? the difference between, say, Vooch on Friday, Vooch on Sunday versus your 11th best player, the difference in those two days is it greater than getting three extra games from Max Struess, Rui Hachimura, Torian Prince, George Niang? I don't know the answer to that because I don't know who that player is on your roster. But you would not be, you would be gaining three extra games. And the difference you have to look at is the drop off from Vooch on Friday to your 11th best guy, or Kobe White to your 11th best guy, and the drop off on Sunday. It, do, can you make that up and exceed it by a significant margin? by getting somebody from Cleveland or the Lakers to give you three extra quality games. Now, the decision on this for Caruso, Desumu, if for some reason you've got the big avocado, Andre Drummond, the decision on that is absolutely just a no-brainer. You do not hold those guys for Friday, Sunday. They are dropped, I believe, very comfortably, and you get three extra games in from a Cavs player. Like, dropping Alex Caruso for Max Struess, as much as we love all Alex Caruso does, getting three extra games in in that roster slot when you probably wouldn't start Caruso Friday or Sunday, and the, the man might get injured anyway. Like, that is an absolute no-brainer decision, even though that player that you add from Cleveland, Max Struess, George Niang, Rui Hachimura, is significantly worse than DeSumo and Caruso. At least playing them is huge. Again, your own individual circumstance. What is the difference? Would Alex Caruso be your eighth best guy on Friday? Well, then you probably hold. Is the guy that's sitting on your bench, old mate Malzinha Pereira, and he'd be, have to move into a starting slot. Well, I don't even know if he plays a single minute, so that's not a beneficial move for you. But these are ways that you can, can subvert the nonsense that does go on. It's a little bit of a different story. Not, not, not quite, but a little bit, the Spurs and the Jazz, right? So they don't play on Monday, but they play on Tuesday. If you can turn, after Tuesday's game, a Spurs and Jazz guy into a Hawks player, you go from a one-quality game scenario into four as well. Because the Hawks, from Wednesday onwards, the Hawks go Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, three more quality games. Now, it is hard to find a Hawks player that's good. That's true. I don't know whether Jalen's coming back. I don't know whether Okongwu's coming back. But let's say three games of Bruno Fernando, three games of Vic Krejci, terrible example, three games of DeAndre Hunter, the perfect one if we've got him, if he's available is three games extra of DeAndre Hunter better than sitting on Keldon Johnson and him rotting on your bench on Friday, Sunday? Or if he's your 10th best player, or Trey Jones. Now, Wembenyama, we're definitely not dropping Victor Wembenyama. All right, 100% not dropping him. Don't if That's not a consideration. You're not dropping Devin Vassell. But on the Jazz, like Keontae George, Taylor Hendricks, John Collins, Walker Kessler, the ghost that is Larry Markkinen, Jordan Clarkson, the man on the street, drop him anyway. Like The difference between having those guys on your team and maybe starting them Friday, Sunday, depends again, maybe not, or the difference between the guy that you start on those days versus if I add a Hawks player, if for some reason Hunter's there, is Fernando got it? Like this is, again, the Chicago one's way better because the value of the players on Cleveland and the Lakers... Uh, going to be much better than those options. You, that That is a clear win. Like adding Vic Krejci for three extra quality games. I don't even know if the difference of three Vic Krejci games exceeds the difference between Caruso or, or Desumu. Uh, not Caruso, sorry, wrong team. Um, uh, the difference between a um, John Collins and your bench guy on Friday or the difference between a Keldon Johnson or Trey Jones and your bench guy on Sunday. I don't know if he exceeds that difference. But if like DeAndre Hunter's there or God, no, I don't know how, but if Bogdan Bogdanovich is available, then like that value is, is pretty significant. 
The one that gets it a little bit more iffier, which is still not ideal, but we open up more opportunities, is taking a Spurs or Jazz guy after Tuesday. So any of these guys, like I don't know if Markkinen's playing, a Sexton, a Keontae George, very easy to drop in this scenario. A Taylor Hendricks, a Walker Kessler, Trey Jones, Champagne, Sohan, who's injured. And you could turn that into a Sixer, Grizzly, Piston, Nets, or Cavs player. You don't get the turn to one quality game and make it into four, but you turn it into three. So you get two extra quality games from that player. And you will find pretty good options here for some of these teams anyway. Like, I don't know who's going to be available, but Philadelphia, Memphis, Detroit, Brooklyn, Cleveland. Paul Reed versus like the difference between John Collins and a bench player on Friday, Sunday. Memphis, who knows what's going to appear, but something might. Jake LaRavia, GG Jackson, not sure. Detroit, well, you know, could be anybody, couldn't it? Chimezi Metsu has been signed for the rest of the season. Is getting two extra qualities out of him versus a Trey Jones who sits on your bench on Friday, Sunday. Very clear win. It's not a, the, the best scenario is turning a fringe bull into a Cavill Laker, get the three extra games in. And again, I, I don't think you'd probably end up doing it with Vooch, but you've got to at least look into it. Same with Kobe White. I don't think it will work with DeRozan, but getting into then the Carusos and Desumus, then yeah, I think it does work. And then as we move down this list, the viability of it, I think, changes somewhat. I'll let you sort of sit on that, marinate on that, have a think about how that all works, and understanding that, again, it is very clear that these players, John Collins, Colin Sexton, Trey Jones, Jeremy Sohan, um, Vooch, White, Caruso, Desumu, they're going to be better than Rui Hachimura. They're going to be better than Jake LaRavia. They're going to be better than these players. But it's not about whether they singularly are better. If you can get triple the amount of games in versus you just slotting in your 11th best player into the starting lineup ahead of that guy, that probably ends up being a win in a lot of cases. You've got to sit and work, sort of work it out, but it's a strategy that's there. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It's the easiest and the most exciting way to play DFS. It is just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six individual player stat projections, and you just watch the winnings roll in. And now it is demon time on Price Picks. You can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks you can turn 10 bucks into $1,000. Demons and Goblins, it's the newest and most exciting way to play at Price Picks. You've got the squares that are marked with the red demons, all the green goblins, and on those squares, you get different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money as well with as little as four correct picks. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of player stat types is what makes Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. The old code is locked on NBA as well. And you get your first deposit match of up to $100. That is pricemix.com slash locked on NBA. Coded up at locked on NBA as well. And you get a first deposit match up to $100. Pricemix, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Okay, so a little bit of strategy talk there. Let's talk three games in four nights just to see how the schedule sort of chunks up. Where do we find some, some things here? Sunday through Wednesday. Brooklyn, Charlotte, Cleveland, the Lakers, the Wolves, the Thunder, the Raptors, and the Wizards. Sunday's a 10-game day in Week 22, heading into the first four, three nights of Week 23. So you can overload with a little bit there. Whether you start those guys on Sunday, Week 22, I don't know. But this can give you a little bit of a head start heading into the week. Atlanta is the only team in Week 23 that goes Monday, Thursday. There are a million teams, and by a million, I mean 12, that play three games in four nights, Tuesday through Friday. It is an extremely overloaded week. Dallas, Warriors, Rockets, Clippers, Heat, Bucks, Wolves, Knicks, Thunder, Kings, Raptors, and Wizards play three games in four nights between Tuesday and Friday. Between Wednesday and Saturday, it's Atlanta, it's Detroit, and it's Memphis. And then to end the week, Dallas, the Warriors, the Rockets, Clippers, Heat, Knicks, Sixers, and Kings play three games in four nights, Thursday through to Sunday. Also remembering that the Monday of week 24 is a zero-game day. Four games in six nights. So Sunday of week 22 to Friday of week 23, a lot of teams. Charlotte, Dallas, Golden State, Houston, the Clippers, Miami, Minnesota, New York, Oklahoma City, Sacramento, Toronto, and Washington play four games in six nights, Sunday through Friday understanding that Friday is a high-volume day there. 
If you go Sunday, uh, sorry, Monday through Saturday, it's Atlanta, Detroit, and Memphis. You'll see those names of teams come up quite a little bit here. And then if we want to look at the end of the week, Tuesday through to Sunday, that is a lot of teams, a lot that backloads in. Cleveland, Dallas, Golden State, Houston, the Clippers, the Lakers, Miami, the Bucks, Minnesota, Knicks, Thunder, Sixers, Kings, Raptors, and Wizards have four games in six nights, Tuesday through to Sunday, understanding that the vast majority of all of those teams play on Friday and Sunday, two extremely high-volume days. If we want to look at the five games in eight nights scenario, look at this. This is how packed we are, this, including the Sunday of week 22 through to the Sunday of week 23, the Nets, the Hornets, the Cavs, Mavs, Warriors, Rockets, Clippers, Lakers, Heat, Wolves, Knicks, Thunder, Sixers, Kings, Raptors, Wizards. That is 16 teams that play five games in eight nights. So not only is that overloaded, not only do we have high volume days, but you are going to have teams that are going to have their schedule really packed. So players are going to sit, especially when seeding starts to become less relevant. What about... What happens with Jim Butler, LeBron, Kawhi, Paul George, the Nets nonsense, the Hornets bullshit, like Luka Doncic is limping around every single game. Where does Steph fit in that? There's so much that's happening there with that five game and eight nights. Now, if I do Monday to Monday, five game and eight nights, no one has it because nobody plays the Monday of week 24. Um, back to backs. If you want to get a little bit of a head start, Sunday through Monday, this is where the Bulls come in really interesting. Because I talked about getting a Bulls player and having them on your roster. You get the nice Sunday, Monday back-to-back, and then you can move off them to get those extra games in. But Brooklyn, Charlotte, and Chicago have the Sunday, Monday. Monday, Tuesday, no back-to-back. Now, we could look at this week and go, well, okay, well, we've got Friday as a high volume, Sunday as a high volume. That's cool. We stream a Monday, Tuesday, back-to-back. We do a Wednesday, Thursday, back-to-back. And we're set. We get the extra games in. But you can't because there's no Monday, Tuesday game. That's why it's, it is really hard to be able to balance this out. So you could, I guess, stream someone in singly on Monday. You could do a Tuesday-Wednesday back-to-back and then a Thursday-Saturday combination as well. If you wanted to avoid the, I've got my bulls and drop and calculate all that sort of stuff. Tuesday to Wednesday, a lot of back-to-backs. Cleveland, these are the two nine-game days. Cleveland, the Lakers, the Bucks, the Wolves, the Thunder, the Raptors, and the Wizards. The Wednesday to Thursday, it's only Atlanta. Would have loved a few more teams there, but alas... Thursday to Friday, that's into a 12-game day. Dallas, Golden State, Houston, the Clippers, the Heat, the Knicks, and the Kings. Thursday to Saturday, missing that Friday 12-gamer, Atlanta, Denver, Philly. That's interesting. So you can do the Tuesday, Wednesday back-to-back, and then transition it into an Atlanta, Denver, Philadelphia team, or Philadelphia guy. Not that there's great options there, but that's you never know what's going to pop up. Friday, Saturday, that's a big back-to-back with that Friday game, obviously. Having 12, that's Detroit and Memphis. And then the weekend back-to-back, Sunday's got 13, but we do have Brooklyn, Cleveland, the Lakers, and the Sixers play the weekend back-to-back. So what about for you blokes in a weekly league? Everybody, 26 teams, play four games. So who are we looking to add? These are guys that are all available in over 50% of leagues that I think you'd add, and I think you'd start. Trace Jackson Davis, number one. Nick Richards. Delano Banton. Vasily Misic and Trey Mann. Three Hornets players, four games. Still widely under rostered. And then Marvin Bagley. I don't know that Holmes is coming back. I've got no idea. But I'd be taking that chance on Bagley. Jackson Davis is clearly the guy I want. Then Banton, then Misic. Nick Richards is very mid with low upside. But these are guys you can add and you can start. As for what you do with the three-game guys, well, I think most of those good players on those teams, Chicago, you had DeRozan and Vooch. And Kobe White for the uh, Nuggets. You've got um, Murray. Well, Murray's an iffy one. But Jokic and, and Porter, you probably start. For the Spurs, Wemby and Vassell, you start. And the Jazz, well, that becomes iffy. You probably start Colin Sexton, but you wouldn't start Larry Markkinen for those three-game teams. So if you are still here and still going, and this is your finals week, good luck. Manage your team correctly. Don't be afraid to make hard decisions, hard cuts because they will be key to getting you victories. The other thing to remember, there is not a single team that does not play across the weekend. So you're not in that spot where you've got these guys and then after Friday, you move off them. There are teams that after Saturday, you can move off, like the Hawks. Their week finishes on Saturday. Memphis finishes on Saturday. 
and Denver finishes on Saturday. So if you're in championship week, make sure that that ridiculous notion of a can't cut list is disabled because you're going to want to drop Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., DeJounte Murray, Clint Capella, Jalen Johnson, Trey Young. You're going to want to drop Jaron Jackson, Desmond Bain, everybody. You're going to want to drop all everyone because they don't play again after Saturday. We just can't do it two days in advance in this week. Hit the thumb, ring the bell, subscribe, and good luck for the end of week 22 to get you oh yeah end of week 22 to get you into the championship and then good luck in week 24 guys we are done here thank you so much for listening everyone see ya